In today's Urbandon video, we search for various abandoned military remains left stranded in the neglected grounds of an active RAF base. The thrilling adventure to reach the out of use aircraft and ground vehicles took a lot of effort, time and consideration, but we are showcasing all of it in a different style of exploration documentary. Join us on the whole mission to see what we find. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. In our last episode, we asked for any memories from the shuttered Chesterfield Hotel when it was functioning. We had some fascinating replies, but are showing this one from Ribo, who explained how the closed site allowed single and working people to stay there for a fair price. This is great to know and is definitely a positive outcome of a popular location coming to the end of its lifespan. This week we would be interested to know whether you would like to see more mission-like videos similar to this feature. Let us know in the comments to possibly feature in our next upload. Our journey begins on a winding country road that spans around the gigantic RAF base, which is one of the largest in the UK. <laughs> You're doing so fluffy. The land surrounding the off-limits zone is hardly populated besides the occasional farmhouse and their animals. We are in the middle of nowhere and we've got a long walk find anything remotely abandoned. Everything feels abandoned, but it's all very natural. Just the scenery alone is worth coming for. The picturesque landscape void of humanity created an environment relatively ideal for urban exploration. We weren't concerned about seeing anybody despite venturing towards an active military base. Plus there was so much coverage that it would be very difficult for anyone to spot our unwanted presence. However, it did come with some troubles. There was zero phone signal across the whole area, so we couldn't contact anybody or use online maps whatsoever. Ground with no attention could boast surprises and terrain tricky to navigate, especially when attempting to stick to a path only available in memory. This Go is on. what we're dealing with. <laughs> One step at a time. It seems dry, but there's a lot of standing water in this marsh. Off camera, I just went knee deep in a random hole that you just wouldn't see. Hopefully it'll all be worth it soon. In our heads, we had each chosen to memorize the route necessary to end up at the disused remnants of war. We would start in our rural parking spot before departing the car and heading west through a huge forest. Our idea of the region was already mistaken when we realised this woodland had been cut down, confusing us slightly and showing that Google Maps was outdated in this section. Nevertheless, moving westward still, various rivers and larger woodland would slow us down for over three miles until we hoped to visualise the small triangle strip of vacant runway where the planes were supposed to lay. All we could pray for is that the repetitive layout of trees and fields we would pass through wouldn't distract us from the planned route, so we would safely conclude the day with an enthralling documentation of the base. Following the slight panic at the deforested woods, you rejoin us as we prepare to enter one collection of trees still standing. There's no other way around the bog, so we're just going to go through it. I mean, the plank looks dry. Apart from that bit. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> it's 
so dark in here. But at least it's not marshy. Oh, this is quite surreal, to be honest. So peaceful. At the edge of the woodland, a thin river exposed us to a vast stretch of field with uneven ground. As long as we had successfully adhered to the correct direction, crossing this would place us in touching distance to some plains. Okay, from the open fields and pine trees, this is my favourite part. It is like walking on a cloud. These little bushes. God. Oh, I see something there. Oh, yeah, there's a vehicle. Yeah. And there's a little box on this hill. About an hour. First sign of anything. I have no idea what that is. You can tell it's related though by the text. We can see planes all the way down this over. Oh, that is a plane. Most of the base is behind us, so we're gonna start up here. And then kind of work our way down. Oh, I can see, look to your left. I can see wings poking over the, the hill. Oh, there's, there's a good few here. Oh yeah. Excited after a couple hours of walking, we briskly headed for a large clump of wings sighted over a banking. Wow. It is a lot bigger than I thought. It's got the um, torpedoes in lock, like at the bottom, ready to drop. indicates that this one was Russian. I didn't actually expect them to be in this good condition. They're obviously no longer flyable. They probably will never be airborne again, but all the details on them are still here, which I find surprising. Despite incorrect terminology at the time, this large fighter bomber is a Sukhoi Su-22M, developed for the Soviet military, although this one would have flown for the East German Air Force. With a camouflaged paint scheme and an intimidating appearance, it was the plane I was drawn to most, unique and alone compared to the others. For most of the planes, located. One, two, three, four, five, six. There is no signs of life apart from the RAF base in a far distance. That's it. We're completely alone all around us. They're just these huge beasts. It was incredible and saddening to see the collection of aircraft in beautiful scenery left without aid or care, especially due to their historical significance. This row of six are Dassault Mystère bombers, introduced in the 1950s and primarily used by the French. This was like a fuel truck, tell by the big silo and pipes coming down to these tanks at the bottom. Got that typical army colour. The tyres have sunk into the ground over time. Wonder how long this has sat here.
battered by the weather and natural circumstances, the aircraft was also accompanied by an array of what is either fuel storage containers or mock missiles, sizeable all the same. We know that most of you watching this video will have a much better knowledge regarding the vehicles and equipment than us, so we would love to be corrected or hear anything we missed in the comments below. The area of the RAF site we discover these military remains in is the practice airfield, hidden away from the rest of the base by forest. It seems that the reason a British airbase stored the foreign planes would be for training and weapons testing, decommissioning them when they became old and unusable. Managed to take off some stuff. See inside. Very empty. But I guess that gives you the idea. This would be probably where the engine is. Whilst wandering atop the fighter jets, we couldn't resist peeking into the stripped cockpits. Inside, there wasn't a great deal of interest in comparison to some we will show later. Our next aim was to finish covering the north peak of the runway, where we had seen a small group of buildings earlier. Let's see what's inside these interesting structures. <laughs> Could have guessed that really. I wonder what these would have been used for. Looks like something out of a paintball. Some machines. Quite a few of them in fact. This obviously leads to something upstairs. But I don't think we can actually get up there. The whole thing is slanted. I think the wooden supports it's on are kind of letting loose after all this time. On back to the ones that we first saw. These two are quite cool. They have no wheels. Or do they? I think they do actually. There's little plants growing covering them. They seem propped up. Like the tails dragged along the ground as if they crashed. And this one here has to be one of my favourites. With the pine trees growing on it. And then the backdrop of huge pine trees. Something you'd only see at this place. Although away from the rest of the ensemble, these two fighter bombers are also of the French Dassault Mystère kind. It was apparent that they had been grounded for a lot longer than the others, having had time for foliage to develop around them. I wish I could say more or knew more about these planes in person, but I'm afraid a lot of the info about them will probably be told to me by someone with a bit more knowledge and it will be added in in the narration. Meanwhile Theo and Alex split up to approach a different vehicle we had again caught wind of an hour earlier. The day was drawing to a close, making us want to cover everything available to us, which led to our separation as we scanned every inch of the airfield. Come across a completely different vehicle now. It's a tank. I think it's the only one on site, but this is possibly the coolest part to the whole place. It's massive. I wouldn't like to ever meet one of these running. Oh, it's a massive bog to get to it. I know. Easily twist or break an ankle in this. Look at this. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Even equipped with a satellite dish. Look at those tracks. 
It was unknown to us at the time, but this was not a tank that ever saw action, more so a replica of one that did. Even though we know this now, it didn't take away from the impressive factor looking at each detail of the model. Look at that. Four gun turrets, all pointing up still. It's really intimidating stood here in front of it. That is the bit where they would have looked through as well from the top. Still fully operational, just about. Completely different type of plane here over on towards the opposite side. Looks like these would have been a double passenger, if you could call it that. One pilot, co pilot, and pilot, maybe. Down towards the lower portion of the runway led us to a few more planes, but of another make. Here we have a trio of American Lockhead TT 3s that were nicknamed Shooting Stars. At this point we had been under the impression that we were done on sight and with good time, however one of us spotted something that would progress the exploration to a whole other degree. So from the last set of planes we were just at, uh, we noticed a big green object in the distance and we think it's a helicopter, an abandoned one. And we're kind of making our way over there but it's a race against time as the sun's setting and there's not that much daylight left so we want to try and trek there before it becomes dark it's like no man's land You can see the planes all the way back over there where we first started. Time passed as we hiked over a mile to get close to the helicopter, our fascination growing every step we took. There would be a spanner in the works though, with a deep river blocking our path. Oh. <laughs> the helicopter's just there, you can even see the propellers. You, you're gonna jump that? Yeah, I can jump that. Are you ready to throw my bag in? son. <laughs> If we walk round it might just be like much closer 10 meters around the corner Already soaked with water from the many marshes we had traipsed through Alex opted to walk through the river and reach the aircraft first as myself and Theo scoured for a shorter gap to jump daylight running out fast Okay this it's about the same distance, but the bit I'm on is raised, so I'm pretty sure I can make this. And the grass is here is quite flat too, so get a nice run up. Nice. I've fallen in so many bogs at this point. I'm just immune. I don't even react. My feet are absolutely soaking. But we finally made it. Wow. Having never seen any abandoned planes before today, topping the mission off with a disused battle hind was absolutely perfect. The helicopter in question is a Mil Mi-24 attack chopper, operational since the early 1970s by the Soviet Air Force. It has capability for eight passengers with a streamlined body and retractable undercarriage landing gear for reduced drag. This is definitely the most intact cockpit we've seen. I'll try to give you a quick look inside through one of the windows. My shadow's slightly annoying, but you can kind of see how untouched it is. It's just a shame because they've padlocked 
yeah, on either side. I guess that's why it's so untouched. With the sunset creating imposing colours across the sky, we finally sat down and thought about what we had accomplished over the afternoon. Besides the massive helicopter and with the faint dots of planes we had passed before in the distance, it was easy to feel as if the hardships was finished. However, night was coming and soon we would be in total darkness, again with no phone connection, forced to undertake a similar path back to the car, drained. The exploration of the abandoned parts of the RAF base has been our favourite we have experienced this year and is up there with our all time greatest. Everything about the location, history and adventure will make this one to remember in years to come. As for the military vehicles, they are past being reused so will probably sit here decaying for a long time. Perhaps the tank model helicopter and the conditionally better planes could be cleaned up and placed in a museum. Thankfully we were able to reach the car with torchlight and a revised route, then we could truly appreciate what we had just endured. We hope you enjoyed coming along with us on the mission and let us know if you'd like to see more inclusive videos like this in the future. Here are some of our photographs capturing the various abandoned vehicles. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description where we post images of our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. This is my favourite video we have ever made, so I really hope you found interest in it. There is more like this planned. See you next time.